Hi, this is John from John's Record Collection. This is box number 18, Lemon Pipers to La Lupe. Pretty much everything in this box begins with the letter L. So the one I have to start with is the Lemon Pipers. Uh, the Lemon Pipers uh, were a group that had a number one hit in the late 1960s with Green Tambourine. They are typically referred to as a bubblegum group, but uh, they were actually a legitimate uh, garage psych band uh, before they got their record deal. And so they, they, they can actually play, despite what the bubblegum label might uh, lead you to believe. Uh, so if you're looking for cheap, psych records, uh, this Lemon Pipers record is actually a good one to get. In fact, uh, there are a bunch of songs on here that are uh, like a little longer, like nine or ten minutes long, uh, where they kind of stretch out a bit, because most of the stuff was intended to be filler, where Green Tambourine was going to be the hit, but thankfully the filler is mostly psychedelic stuff that they, you know, experimented a little bit. So uh, this is actually a cheap... Uh, cheap psychedelic record, um, if you want one. Uh, so that's the Lemon Pipers' uh, Green Tambourine. That was a hit record back in the day. And the this one, this is another one of my uh, collections of Beatles covers, Lennon, McCart Lennon and McCartney Tijuana style. So this is in the style of Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. So... A lot of people who were not Herb Albert uh, actually tried to sound like Herb Albert because he he was selling a lot of records back in the day, even though he's not really very very well remembered today. But this is one of those records, and it just happens to be all uh, all Beatles covers done in the Latin brass style associated with Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass. So that's what this is, Lennon McCartney. Tijuana style. And <laughs> yes. So unfortunately, the, the actor who played Squiggy from Lenny and Squiggy, a uh, guy named David Lander, he passed away. But this is Lenny and Squiggy present Lenny and the, the Squig Tones. I got it for relatively cheap. This was like nine bucks. But uh, uh, ever since David Lander died, it's actually really gone up in price. Uh, but uh, this is a very funny record. Um, it's the Lenny and Squiggy characters from La the Laverne and Shirley show from the 1970s and 1980s. But uh, another one of the draws of this record, besides the really cool poster that comes with it, is, uh, is that uh, Christopher Guest, Christopher Guest uh, is on this. So Christopher Guest guests under this under the name Nigel Tufnell which is the name he would use as a member of Spinal Tap. And of course, uh, both after, uh, after Michael McKeon was Lenny, he later became David, David St. Hubbins in Spinal Tap. So this is a, so aside from the Laverne and Shirley connection, there's a Spinal Tap connection to it, and I think that's mainly driving the price up on this record. And uh, let's see, uh, very nice Hawaiian record. Uh, so this is actually a little bit more like a soft uh, singer-songwriter psych record. Uh, it's a married couple named Leon and Malia. Uh, I'm told this is the one record to get by them. It's called Blend. Um, but, uh, I'm told it's not as expensive as it used to be. So that's good. Um, and... This was another uh, Leon and Malia record, but it's a children's record, and it has some electronic stuff on it, except uh, unlike most electronic uh, records for children, this was made out of Hawaii, so it's got some Hawaiian content on it. And uh, this is a 1950s comedy record, uh, rock and roll music for kids over 17, Jack E. Leonard. And this, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. oh, this is a very nice, this is a very nice record of the musical Saw. It's a guy named Jim Leonard, Super Saw. Uh, this one's, this one's actually a little hard to track down, but well, when you track it down, I guess it's not that expensive because there aren't that many people chasing musical Saw records except 
me and a bunch of other weirdos. But uh, that's what you have there. And uh, ah, a very nice uh, female folk psychedelic solo record, Leonda, uh, Woman in the Sun. I'm told this comes in at, uh, at least two cover variations. I have, I guess the cover I have has her picture on the front cover. So it's Leonda. Uh, I don't know if she had Native American ancestry or claimed to have Native American ancestry, but there are some like Native American symbols on the back cover and stuff like that. And then, uh, uh, Leon's Creation. That is a uh, Bay, San Francisco Bay Area funk band, kind of in the mold of Sly and the Family Stone. And then we have, okay. Ah, the Leopards. The Leopards, uh, this is probably uh, the best Kinks knockoff record that I have ever heard. So it is, it's a, it's a privately pressed record, but evidently whoever was in this band were really into the Kinks and they basically worked excruciatingly hard to sound exactly like them, which is great because, you know, it, um, all music is imitative, so why not imitate somebody good? So these guys imitate the Kinks, and they're called the Leopards. And, uh, let's see. Uh, this is, okay, this is another record on ESP disc. It's, uh, I believe, the, it's a, a mother and father. Uh, they're married, married couple with their kids, and they call themselves the Levitts. And uh, it's actually kind of, it has a sunshine, it's the closest thing to a sunshine pop record that ESP Disc put out. Uh, but uh, the parents are kind of these bohemian jazz people. So it's, it's a little different than your standard sunshine pop. But... Uh, yeah, it's basically what a Sunshine Pop record on a record label as crazy as ESP Disc would sound like. And, uh, the, okay, Don Lewis, uh, this, uh, this is a very interesting sort of Hammond organ lounge record. Uh, uh, it has a great cover of Aquarius on it, like many lounge records do. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and the, oh, they've got the look of love. The look of love the, uh, from uh, Casino Royale. That's a great lounge standard. The look of love. Uh, another uh, Beatles uh, record of Beatles covers. This is Ramsey Lewis, Mother Nature's Son. So, um, if you recognize the title, Mother Nature's Son is off the White Album. And so this record is pretty much covers of Beatles songs, but limited to covers that were taken from the White Album. So it's got stuff like, in addition to Mother's Nature's Son, stuff like uh, everybody's got, uh, so they got Back in the USSR, uh, Dear Prudence, everybody's got something to hide except for me and my monkey. So it has a lot of Beatles songs that don't frequently get covered, but they do get covered. They get some instrumental covers on this record. So Ramsey Lewis, he's a great jazz keyboardist, and so he can make uh, anything he covers, you know, you know, kind of funky jazz. So it's good stuff. And uh, this is a very good psych record, the Lewis and Clark Expedition. It was on Cool Gems Records. Cool Gems was the record label that had all the Monkees uh, albums. So uh, Cole Gems, uh, which is from Columbia Screen Gems, um, Cole Gems wanted to turn the Lewis and Clark expedition into another example of the monkeys, but they never really got it off the ground. But uh, fortunately, the, the people in Lewis and Clark expedition are, are um, they're good musicians, and uh, they have some really good pop psych uh, songs on this record. Uh, I think they, uh, I think there's a clip on YouTube of the Lewis and Clark expedition on an episode of I Dream of Jeannie, uh, or may maybe it was Gomer Pyle or something like that. But there's, there's a there's an episode of 60s TV where these guys showed up. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't, uh, you know, get a lot of hits. Uh, they had like one hit in the top 100 called "I Feel Good, I Feel Bad," 
and okay, this is another kitty record, kind of generic kitty uh, education record. Yeah, so this is, uh, so I guess this is uh, Elle under Georgia Lincolnoni. She did a bunch of kitty records. I've been following her work a little bit, but uh, not everybody's into kitty records as much as I, oh, here. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Lotta and the Neptune. So this is this is sort of a beat group that does German folk songs. Um, I, I've only seen this in, I bought this from a catalog. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it anywhere else, but uh, Lisa Lotta and the Neptunes. And here, here's a uh, bubblegum band called Lieutenant Garcia's Magic Music Box. It's kind of a Latin tinged uh, bubblegum record. And oh, now now we're getting into some records I have by the great Enoch Light. Enoch Light, he was a great musical arranger and composer, and he was associated with the Command and Project Three record labels, and uh, he did a lot of very interesting. Um, interesting uh, lounge and space age bachelor pad music so this is one of his later ones in the 70s the brass menagerie 1973 it has an excellent cover of shaft on it uh, this is uh, as you might expect heavily brassy but um his, his uh, arrangements are are amazing uh they have lots of many different instruments and sound colors and tone colors in them and don't have a single instrument dominating, even when it's like a brass, heavily brass record like this one. Uh, and then, uh, for a second there, I, I thought I didn't have this record, but I do. It's lovely. It's called Permissive Polyphonics uh, by Enoch Light in the Light Brigade. It has this amazing uh, Piet Mondrian style cover, and it has lots of great covers on it. Scarborough Fair. Uh, oh, I think it has it has a great cover of Crosby, Stills and Nash, Marrakesh Express on this. That is not usually covered very often. So this is a very good, um, very good, uh, you know, space age bachelor pad music cover, uh, uh, music album. <laughs> Oh, this is the one that people really always want to get because of the cover, but uh, even the Enoch Light albums without an amazing cover like this. So this is Spaced Out. Enoch Light presents Spaced Out. It is an amazing space age uh, Moog synthesizer record, and it, the people love it because there is a basically there's a, a, a model on the front cover with this amazing tin foil bikini on it. Uh, so people absolutely adore the cover, but the music also lives up to the cover. Thank goodness that's not always the case. Uh, but uh, uh, so Enoch Light, lots of good records with that guy. Oh here, okay, this is a. This is kind of a new agey group, uh, sort of a psychedelic into new age group called Light Rain, and they did a record called Dream Dancer. So you kind of have these uh, hippie holdouts from the 70s, and some of the records they do are actually quite good. So, oh, this, this is a promo LP of a uh, female group called Lily and Maria. So this is... Uh, you know, pretty much soft pop psych. It's not. It's not a hard record. Uh, but if you like, um, if you like soft psych, uh, this can definitely fill the bill for you. And uh, the now this is one of I. Uh, this is not on mainstream. It's on mainstream if it were a U.S. pressing. This is a U.K. pressing of Lincoln Street Exit uh, called Drive It. So Lincoln Street Exit, uh, it's a really good band. Uh, the members were mostly Native American, and uh, they recorded under the names Lincoln Street Exit, but they also uh, recorded under the name Exit, which uh, under X-I-T. So they spelled it, they pronounced it Exit, but they, uh, 
began it with the letter X. So Lincoln Street Exit and Exit, X-I-T. So if you're interested in some Native American uh, garage rock, Native American hard rock, uh, look for records under those two names, Lincoln Street Exit. And Lloyd Lindroth and his quartet. So this is a this is kind of a uh, lounge record from a guy who does harp. I think there's one. Uh, oh, I don't have his more recent record in this box, but uh, he ha he has some other good records. Uh, this is a uh, lounge record. So oh, actually two two by a band called the Lynx. So. I don't know if they're as popular these days, but they, they were uh, fairly collectible back in the 90s, 2000s, as uh, one of the private press uh, lounge albums that a bunch of people were chasing at the time. I don't know if they're as popular now, but uh, if you, you know, uh, collect lounge acts like me, you probably uh, try to find them. Uh, Liquid Smoke, this is a bluesy uh, psychedelic band. Uh, they have a really good, um, good rendition of Hard to Handle, uh, which is an Otis Redding song, uh, but it became fam more famous uh, later as a Black Crow song. You know, hey, pretty mama, let me light your candle, because mama, you're sure hard to handle. They do that song, and uh, their version is good. Their version is really good. Uh, I think there's some beats, on, so it's a psychedelic record, but I think some uh, beat diggers like to chase this record because of uh, some uh, drum breaks on it. And then, uh, here's, here's one called Listen, Move, and Dance, number four. So this is a, this is a very nice uh, electronic uh, kitty record uh, that, um, let's see, it's, it's, so it's uh, one, side one is moving percussion, and side two is called electronic sound to pictures. So this is another one of the, where uh, electronic music is smuggled in in the guise of a children's record. Uh, and let's see what else we got here. Oh, yes. So this is a band called Listening. Uh, uh, they have a song on here called Stoned Is. Uh, they're, they're connected to that other band called Sinara, uh, which also has a which also has a song on there called Stoned Is. So they, they're, they're kind of a jazzy, jazzy, blissed out, let's uh, smoke a lot of weed and be really, really relaxed kind of psychedelia on this album. And uh, this is a reissue. Uh, it's a, a band from Minnesota called The Litter. Uh, and the, the Title is one hundred dollar fine. Uh, I'd love to find an original of the Litter's first two albums, but uh, that is, I, I have not yet succeeded in my quest. But uh, here, uh, this is the only major label album that the Litter did. This is an original copy that was on ABC Records. It was called Emerge by the Litter, uh, but um, probably the first two albums are better than the third one. But I mean, the third is still a good album. They're still a tight, you know, tight rocking band. But uh, by the time they got to a major label, I guess they were kind of <laughs> worn out uh, by record company skullduggery. So it's the first two records that are really the ones that hit well. Uh, let's see, the Lively Art Singers. So I probably got this one for, yes, it has a Beatles cover. Yesterday is on this one. Uh, I think it is, um, yeah, it's an all-female group. I'm not exactly sure uh, what their deal is, but uh, I bought it for a Beatles cover on it. And here's a very good one. Uh, the Liverpool Five. The Liverpool Five arrive. So uh, this is a major label record that was on RCA, the RCA record label. And uh, what's notable about it is they are a British group that recorded the first version of I'm Not Your Steppin' Stone, which later became a big hit for the Monkees. So there were a bunch of groups that recorded I'm Not Your Steppin' Stone, including Paul Revere and the Raiders, but the 
but uh, the monkeys were the first one uh, to have a hit with it. And it's actually, uh, I'm not your seven star. It's a very underrated song. It's very punky. It's even kind of punky and snotty and has some attitude. I mean, at least the Sex Pistols thought so. There was a, there's a very good Sex Pistols cover of uh, I'm Not Your Stepping Stone. So uh, this this has some like kind of good diversity beats, early garage stuff on it. Um, the Living Guitars, San Francisco Night. So I don't necessarily have a lot of Living Guitars records. Um, the Living Guitars were kind of an e easy listening mainstay group and you know a lot of guitars with a lot of strings and arrangements on them. This one's very different because it's the psychedelic uh, album that they put out and it has a lot of sitar and there's a really amazing cover of the Beatles' Baby You're a Rich Man on here. Uh, but it also has San Francisco Nights, the Eric Burden song, and Purple Harems, A Wider Shade of Pale. So this this is a really good uh, record of uh, acid, easy, easy listening. Um, ooh, Jubimo. So uh, L J U B I M O. So it's kind of in a weird place alphabetically for this box. It is a record uh, of uh, a band consisting solely of nuns. And this is actually quite good. So if you, L-J-U-B-I-M-O, if you ever see it, reach out and grab it. It is, it's basically like uh, if the nuns from Sister Act had a mid-1960s folk rock group. And uh, it's it's great, or it or it might have been an episode of Flying Nun or something, but this is real. So it, the, the fact that it's real makes it much cooler. So uh, a bunch of nuns having their own little folk rock group, and uh, Ron Lloyd, uh, Let There Be Light, uh, amazing cover. Um, my memory is going blank on what this sounds like, so I might have to revisit this. Um, Local H, that's a more 1990s group. Um, Local H uh, were a uh, white guy and black guy. It was mainly two guys, so they're what they call a power duo, like the White Stripes or the Black Keys. Uh, but uh, uh, this is a good album, but Local H, ham-fisted. So uh, I happen to like this record, even though it's kind of underrated. Um, and, oh, yes. The Glass... The Glass World of Anna Lockwood. So this is a very nice uh, record of experimental classical music uh, done on instruments made completely out of glass. So the Glass World of Anna Lockwood. And oh, and of course you can't forget. So don't don't be afraid of trying to check out. Uh, groups that sing in a foreign language because sometimes it is all about the music and the lyrics are not as important. And this is a great just kind of pre-Beatles rockin' group called Los Locos del Ritmo. So this is like one of the biggest uh, Mexican rock groups that existed around the time uh, before the Beatles and they're just really good. They're really good. Um, they do some covers of some American tunes, but they're they're actually not the obvious stuff. Like they, they cover some obscure stuff, uh, and they have some of their own tunes. So there's like both kind of rockabilly-ish uh, vocal numbers, and they also have some really good you know surf style uh, instrumentals. So uh, this is really good. Um, Los Locos del Ritmo Rock. So evidently rock. In Espanol is rock. And so, oh my god. Woohoo! I love this one. The Lollipop Shop. So, uh, there's a guy in this band. Uh, oh, unfortunately, my name is blanking on the guy's name. 
but uh, he was in uh, Fred Cole. Fred Cole is his name. Uh, he was in Dead Moon. Um, I think he was in another band called The Wipers. Uh, and uh, so this is a guy that uh, was in garage rock bands. He was in psychedelic bands, and he kept rocking until he was in punk bands. And uh, so, but anyway, this guy in the lollipop shop. This is pretty hard uh, garagey uh, psychedelic music. Uh, really good stuff. Um, you must be a witch is an amazing song that they did. Uh, there's another one called Who Will Read the Will, uh, but uh, just great original punk snotty punk garage psych songs by the Lollipop Shop. Uh, Ah uh, yes, Julie London. So this is this is Julie London's uh, entry into the uh, what I call the geezers go psychedelic genre. So uh, Julie London was uh, pressed to make a more up to date record, where up to date meant up to date with like the late sixties, and so it's called Yummy Yummy Yummy, um, where she does a cover, ver a very breathy Julie London style cover version of the Ohio Express bubblegum song, Yummy, 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 I've Got Love in My Tummy. And uh, supposedly Julie London was so disgusted with this record that she stopped recording music and went to acting full time. Uh, but uh, I, I like it. I'm, I'm sorry she didn't like it, but I, I happen to like it. And uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Los Londonenses. So this is Lo Mejor de los Beatles. The Best of the Beatles, Hell. So, oh yeah, so this one. So it's a it's an album by an, a Spanish group called Los Londonenses. Or a, I guess Mexican group called Los Londonenses. So they're Spanish speaking. They do all the songs in Spanish. And all the songs, or almost all the songs, are taken from the Help or Hard Day's Night era of the Beatles. And it's, well, it, 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 you know, it's kind of amazing. If you wanted to see an alternate universe Mexican version of the Beatles, well, here you are. It's, it exists. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think this is a, a Christian rock musical called Lonesome Stone. I'm going to have to revisit this. I, I'm not sure I remember what it sounds like. Um, uh, Claudine Langer. Uh, Claudine Langer uh, was, uh, she's kind of a uh, sort of a loungy or easy listening singer with a very like baby doll voice. Uh, she acted in a bunch of movies in the late 60s, including uh, uh, The Party, the bit Blake Edwards movie with Peter Sellers. So, uh, Claudine Langer, um, if you watch early Saturday Night Live, there's a bit that Chevy Chase does about Claudine Langer. Uh, uh, basically, Claudine Langer ended up uh, accidentally shooting and killing her uh, ski... Um, ski champion boyfriend, a guy named Spider Savage, and uh, there is a very old uh, Saturday Night Live sketch where Chevy Chase very uh, mercilessly makes fun of her uh, for that, but uh, one reason I got this is uh, it has some unusual song choices for Claudine Langer, including a cover version of the Beatles, Don't Let Me Down, and uh, let's see. Uh -huh. Oh, here, here, here's some good stuff. <laughs> yes. So these are very, um, very weird private press records from a guy named uh, Alexander Long Rifle, uh, and he was a he was a Native American singer who I guess wanted to be an Elvis impersonator, or he, he even wanted to be Elvis. And uh, some of these records are, it's like listening to a lounge band version of the Red Hot Chili Peppers backing up 
uh, an Elvis impersonator. So that uh, you know that description may turn it up, turn you off, but that is precisely why I like these records. So I happen to have four four records by Alexander Roth Long Rifle, and uh, yeah, uh, there's a he does a song in there called Slip It. Slip it in when it's wet, and it, yeah, it's about as suggested as you might think it is. Um, Christmas uh, with Joe Longstreet and John Escosa. Uh, this is just a Christmas record. Uh, I think I picked it up in North Dakota back in the day. And uh, where are we looking for? Oh, uh, this is a very an excellent psychedelic easy listening. Record. It's the Lotus Palace by the Alan Lorber Orchestra. Uh, some really amazing stuff on it. Um, it has uh, Within You, Without You, and Mash uh, uh, um, you know, which is a very nice Bossa Nova-ish number. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. So easy listening with a you know Indian psychedelic tinge and. Uh, Padre Pio. So this is this this is uh, uh, industrial. It's it's basically like private press industrial music, but very very Catholic. So if you are very devoutly Catholic, but you're wishing like, hey, why isn't there any industrial music for me? Well, Padre Pio. That I guess they're your bag. And uh, some more. instrumental easy listening style music, Lord Sitar. Um, Lord Sitar uh, in real life was a, a uh, session musician, I believe a guy by the name of Big Jim Sullivan, uh, but there were rumors at the time that Lord Sitar was actually George Harrison performing under an alias, but uh, that's just hype. Um, Lord Such and his heavy friends. Uh, this is this is my only Lord Such record, uh, but uh, uh, some some uh, compilations of his stuff are relatively easy to get because uh, basically he had uh, he had a talent for picking out people who would become big names later. So this record has Jimmy Page, John Bonham, Jeff Beck, Noel Redding. Uh, from the Jimi Hendrix experience, and there, but he, he got these guys on record long before they became famous, and then after they became famous, they started to cash in with a bunch of records. But uh, so this guy Lord Such, uh, uh, Lord Such and his heavy friends. Uh, so he, he was his full name was Screaming Lord Such. He was this really crazy character from the UK, one of the earliest like. Uh, rock and roll figures of the UK of the pre pre Beatles era, and uh, if you can pick up some of his stuff, it's it's uh, pretty freaky stuff. If you, especially if you like that stuff by the Cramps that combines a lot of you know Halloween and horror and uh, rock and roll. And uh, Bent Lawrenson uh, electronic music. Uh, I, I believe this was a purchase I made it for 50 cents at a garage sale, but it is a, 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 it's a very hard to find uh, electronic record. And here's another uh, one of those Texas bands of international artists. It's called Lost. And um, let's see what else we get. Okay, the Lost Generation. Uh, I think this is another one of those psych lounge whatever bands that I like. Um, and uh, oh, here's a good one. Here, here are two good ones. So let me uh, get them both out. It is so the two two albums. The two studio albums by Lothar and the Hand People. Lothar and the Hand People uh, were a great psychedelic band. Uh, they, they're 
the thing that made them unique was that they had a theremin that they called Lugfar, and they integrated the theremin and theremin music uh, into the band's music uh, as a uh, completely integrated part of the band. So um, they, they were kind of the, a band that could only exist in the context of the very late 60s, but I'm glad that it did. And uh, so that is Lothar and the Hand People. by Le Florian, and I got this just from the Kind of Experimental Jazz Record. It has some unusual instruments on it, like it has some Indian instruments like Sarad and the uh, tambura, which is a percussion instrument, and it has uh, uh, a toy piano, toy piano on it, so a little kinky toy piano that kids would play. And uh, so Le Florian. It's uh, one of those, and after Lothlorien, I have, I actually got to talk with this guy over the internet, uh, his name is William Loveborough, L-O-U-G-H, Burrow, B-U-R-O-U-G-H, bongo drum instruction, so this guy was a very interesting guy from the beatnik era, this is a record that he made on folk ways to teach people to play the bongos. Uh, he also did some very interesting uh, work building instruments with the uh, avant-garde composer Eric Parch. So uh, very interesting guy. Unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago, but uh, I got to talk to him um, back in the day. And uh, this is... So this is a band that I've loved since I was in high school. It is the psychedelic band Love. This is their second album, The Capo. Uh, it has just amazing songs on it. She Comes in Colors, The, the Castle, Candida, Seven and Seven Is, just uh, uh, Stephanie Knows Who, just amazing songs, uh, very tight, uh, folk rock psych band that uh, came out of the same club scene that the bird in Los Angeles that the birds did and it's uh, it's just a band I've loved for a long time so that's an original copy of De Capo uh, here here is uh, one of their later albums Full Start uh, one of the songs on this record so this is uh, Love After um, Arthur Lee basically broke up the band and then reformed the band under the name Love. Uh, this is a bit more hard rock oriented version of the group Love. Uh, there's a track on here that uh, features a guest appearance from Jimi Hendrix, so that's nice. So it's called False Start. And uh, this is the classic, classic. Stereo copy of Love Forever Changes. Uh, uh, this is their this is their masterpiece, their third album, Forever Changes. Uh, it's one of the it's it's literally one of my top ten albums of all time. It is absolutely amazing, amazingly gorgeously orchestrated psychedelic music from the great guitars to and. It was made the same year as uh, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, but uh, I might be heretical and say it's even better than the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It is one of the greatest psychedelic albums of all time, and it's equally one of my favorites of all time of any uh, musical genre you can think of. So, love forever changes. And, and of course, here's the album that started it all, Love. Their first album it was self-titled so it, the album is also called love and it has uh their their uh, minor hit uh my little red book um there's a song uh, about it well, about a band who ended, who ended up uh, addicted to heroin called signed dc which is absolutely amazing it's a very downbeat song uh 
can't explain the immigration message to pretty, uh, 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 soft as you can need. There's there just so many great songs on this, both hard and soft, uh, and just regardless of the approach that you twist to the song, whether it's hard or soft, it is just uh, a beautiful and unique sound. Um, you know, here, here, so we're at love, the love part of my collection. So we have a lot of hippie groups with love in their name. This is the Love Exchange, a really top-notch sun, sunshine pop psych group. Uh, some of the, uh, I happen to like, uh, you know, sort of a sub-genre of sunshine pop, where there's sometimes a moody undercurrent to it all that occasionally the, uh, the sunshine pop will shift from major keys into minor keys and like maybe hint at a little bit of darkness behind the sunshine. Um, this is a record that uh, kind of fits that bill, uh, The Love Exchange. It also has some sort of, uh, you know, some Jefferson Airplane style tinges, but it, it's more in the mode of Los Angeles sunshine pop than with what uh, San Francisco was doing at that time period. So that's Love Exchange. Unfortunately, it's their only album. And then uh, I have a bunch of albums by another group called The Love Generation. And they are just a sort of classic hippie group. They didn't necessarily, they weren't necessarily innovative for their time. They are very much of their time. And so you might, you know, some people might dismiss it as dated, but sometimes you just need a, uh, a, a group that epitomizes its time period. Uh, and uh, the Love Generation definitely is one of those upbeat sunshine pop uh, groups that does that. So the Love Generation, and I should have some other, here's another Love Generation album I have, a generation of love. And also, Ah, yes, Montage, Montage, by the Love Generation. So I have multiple albums by the Love Generation. And, ooh, and I have yet more. Well, so I have four albums by the Love Generation. I didn't know I had that many. Uh, but uh, definitely uh, uh, something appealed to me about that group, and I got into a, got a you know, Pokemon, got to have them all kind of mode with them. This one... Um, this one is a group called the Love Machine, and it's called Electronic Music to Blow Your Mind By. And this is just a very, very weird record. It actually reminds me a little bit of The Ventures, um, you know, the instrumental guitar group, but with a little bit of avant-garde music called Kratz. You know, like some of the like French experimental music uh, laid on top of it, if you can believe it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a very weird record. Um, it's kind of avant-garde by accident in the sense that some of these budget labels would just send a bunch of people loose in a studio to make all the craziest possible noises they could make, and they'd just slap it onto a record because some people would buy it. And so some of these are collectible for that reason, but uh, yeah, this is one of those records. Electronic music to blow your mind by. And indeed, you have been here. So, um, obviously we want to do that. Uh, here's a great compilation series, Love, Peace, and Poetry. This is, so it does, uh, Love, Peace, and Poetry is a collection of a lot of uh, highlights from very rare albums that would... Uh, cost you at least a thousand dollars if you were to buy them individually uh, but uh, thankfully the, the highlights from those albums are collected on a uh, very nice album uh, so this is love peace and poetry this is african psychedelic music so uh, it shows how psychedelic music was something that happened in the late 60s and early 70s on all continents uh, except maybe antarctica but uh, pretty much all continents, and here's another one. This is uh, American psychedelic music, the love, peace, and poetry. So I had one of African and one of uh, of American.
Okay, and then I think there's some Asian and Latin American uh, wines in the same series, although I guess I don't have them in my collection. Uh, Colleen Lovett, Birds with Broken Wings. So this is a this is another um, solo female artist working in a kind of soft folk psychedelic vein, and. Uh, moving away from psychedelic music, here we have Fred Lowry, a family Christmas. So Fred Lowry is a very interesting guy. He, he basically uh, did Christian music, but uh, his uh, particular unique ability was that he would whistle. So he was a whistler, and he wouldn't sing, he would whistle the tunes and hymns that uh, he would play. And in this case, uh, this is a Christmas record that he did, uh, and it has a lot of uh, you know Christmas carols and stuff on it. Um, here's another Fred Lowry. Uh, yeah, oh, right, he was blind. So he's Fred Lowry, the blind whistler. It is well within my soul. So um, yes, this is a is definitely very uh, religious in content, uh, but uh, obviously you don't have many whistlers uh, as musicians, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, here, this is a very interesting record. There's a very interesting story behind it. Uh, songs of protest and anti-protest. Uh, it was originally a record that was released by a guy named Chris with a D, except uh, there, there, the, the label, which had the album, suddenly had to not release it. But they already had the, uh, the covers already made. And so what they did is they hired somebody else to write different songs with the same titles as the album they had to suppress. And so this is the album that they created out of that. And uh, so it's called Songs of Protest and Anti-Protest. It's kind of a solo folk psych record from about the 1966, early 1967 era. But it's kind of rare because of those shenanigans involving the record company where basically they had to have some random guy come up with a new album out of thin air. And uh, th this, this was so done on such a cheap uh, shoestring operation. The, the front cover isn't even uh, a, co uh, a picture of Chris Lucy or Chris Ducey. It's actually a picture of Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones, but done very, very blurry. So you can't tell who it is. Um, Here's an amazing uh, electronic experimental record. I was sitting in a room with Alvin Lucier. Uh, Lucier, Lucier, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but uh, I am sitting in a room is amazing because it, what it does is it, it simply repeats the words, I am sitting in a room, much like the one you are sitting in now over and over and over again. But every single time it gets repeated, the, the words reverberate against the wall of a room it's, report, uh, it's recorded in. And then, uh, for some reason, they, they created an environment where the reverberations start uh, taking over the words that the person is saying. So... Eventually, it goes from sounding like a conventional English sentence to you know, it, it, the, 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 the sound waves start canceling each other out, and it's just uh, it's just a completely amazing sonic experiment. It is unlike typical electronic music. It's like they did this sort of experiment about how sound waves bounce in a room and just sort of did it saying, hmm, uh, 
let's see if this happens. Let's like let's just do this experiment, see if we can pull it off. And they did pull it off. So it's uh, I am sitting in a room by Alvin Lucy. And uh, and here's one of those dark 1950s occult records, Black Mass by Lucifer. It was associated with the uh, electronic musician and arranger Mort Garson, but it was released under the name Lucifer. So I think this actually, I haven't tried to use it under a black lava lamp or glow in the dark ultraviolet light, but I'm told it might glow under ultraviolet light. So uh, it was one of those, you know, uh, 1970s occult cash in records that they were trying to make things sound all spooky and. And then here we have uh, Rhythm and Rhyme by, let's see, it's uh, let's see, Sharon Lucky. Sharon Lucky. Uh, so we're very close to the end of L's. Rhythm and Rhyme. Uh, there's a very nice uh, children's song on here called Keys Porridge, which was uh, sampled by De La Soul on their album, uh, De La Soul is Dead. So there's some very interesting uh, kids' uh, music on this one. It's uh, slightly in demand among yeah, you know, DJs and people who look for samples because there's some good uh, drum beats and drum breaks on it. And uh, so that's one of those. Uh, here, uh, if I had an original of this, this would be much more expensive, but this is uh, Louie Louie. Uh, uh, touchy by Louie Louie. It's a he's kind of a Latino lounge performer who plays these songs with these really, really boinky, bouncy, boinky synthesizers, and it's just very wacky, uh, idiosyncratic music. And uh, like he basically has a dance called called the touchy and like do you want to do the touchy with me so uh, very very odd off the wall stuff and this is another this is another total period piece it's a uh, lumby uh, and it's a it's a band it's an actual band but the 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 the, the uh, name of the album is called overdose and it's an actual album, and the album came with a game. The album came with a game, which actually had a game board and game pieces. And basically, this teaches you that if you mess around with drugs, you're going to overdose and die. So, it, so uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these anti-drug albums, they, they didn't mess around. They didn't mess around. They they weren't sugar coating this for you. So, uh, lumpy overdose, and. Uh, here is Ralph Lundston. He is a, a Scandinavian electronic music composer, uh, electronist music. Uh, I can't remember if he's Swedish or Danish or Norwegian, but he's, Scandin he's a Scandinavian guy of some kind. And uh, he did, he, he's kind of more progressive, new agey later on, but this is more straight ahead. Uh, uh, experimental electronic classical music um, that he did in the 60s, I think. Um, and then we have the final record in the box, La Lupe. Uh, the record is called The Queen Does Her Own Thing. So this is another example of, I like those albums where they take an older performer and like try to modernize their sound for the late 60s. And so this is one of those albums for La Lupe, uh, and it's called The Queen Does Her Own Thing. La Lupe was like a queen, she was, uh, she was a great uh, salsa music singer, uh, kind of salsa, boogaloo, Latin music singer. And uh, she she's doing, uh, like she's doing some very nice uh, Janis Joplin style vocals on this record. So she does a version of Down On Me, which is a Janis Joplin song. Uh, she does Touch Me uh, by The Doors. 
uh, and she does some other uh, nice ones. But uh, this this was uh, sort of a Latin record that was trying to go crossover, but it, it, in the mid, you know, late '60s, '68, '69. Uh, but it, it's good. It's good. It's not. It does not suffer from being a crossover record. It fuses a lot of really good, solid Latin material with stuff that was more contemporary circa 1968, 1969. So La Lupe, the queen, does her own thing. Um, this is on Roulette Records. I don't think, it, she wasn't usually on a lot of major label records, so this is one of her rare major label albums. She was usually on uh, albums that specialized in Latin music, but uh, she's good, she's really good. So La Lupe, the queen, does her own thing. We need more musicians who do their own thing. Well, anyway, I'm done with doing my thing, and uh, I thank you for uh, watching while I finished off unboxing this box. Thank you.